Hello, I'm Mr. Lori from Lori. I'm busy as fuck. I would say that this this Corona times or Corona era or whatever you want to call it has been one of the best goddamn times of the whole of my whole you know career of you know with Lori because I didn't have to go anywhere so there was time to create and there was time to do this I mean let's face it without the corona this wouldn't have been possible so I've been very creative I've been in, uh, very productive well and now as an as an you know outcome of that there's seven full albums now so I've been good now now if now if there would be collection I don't think any of the songs on collection would be <laughs> on collection, I don't think so. There's like 35 songs that, that I did demos for that were left over from this, you know. And yeah, yeah, I mean, we really did have to compromise because we really did have to, you know, select the albums that we're not going to be doing from the collection timeline, you know, that were the albums that were mentioned on the collection compilation album. So we had to choose the albums that we're not doing. So, you know, but we kind of combined because there were quite a few albums from the 80s on the collection. I think four. So I think we skipped three of them, you know, from the 80s. And, and you know, we made it work. You know, luckily on, 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 on every album, there's quite a few songs, you know. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you could kind of like touch all these different uh, genres there. But uh, while that being said, you know, um, while we all already were, you know, deep in the process and we had all, all the plans, you know, you know, locked. That's when I had the added, oh shit, we should have done a country album, <laughs> and we should have done like complete, um, like like uh, 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 um, electronic album. Oh wow! Yeah. yeah. So that's that's those those two things, I would have, you know, liked to do. But that, that came, that those ideas came in too late, you know. Yeah. Is that something that might still happen in the future, that you're doing those three and... Well, three who, who knows? I mean, I, I mean, as long as there are, there are people that are stupid enough to finance my stupid <laughs> ideas, and it's sure, I, I mean, it, it, I'm not the one to blame, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it was funny. I, when I first had the idea, you know, I was laughing out loud with myself at home, like, <laughs> just crazy. And for a few days, or, you know, for some time I was just like, I had some other ideas too, but, but this was the only one that really made me smile and, you know, laugh. So I called our drummer, Mana, and uh, we came up with a plan that how could we do this? Then I called our A&R, Janne, who said that absolutely not, that is that is <laughs> the stupidest shit you have ever heard. And, and, and it took, like for me it took like one hour and 15 minutes to convince him and he said sure I will say okay I am on a board but only not because I want to be part of this craziness but I want to be part of the I can tell you that okay I'm on board because I know it's safe to say I'm okay because I know that your label and your manager will tell you to fuck off <laughs> and then I said sure well we'll see about that and I called our manager and our manager said that it's the best idea that you've ever had and then he started negotiating with the label and the label did not say no but they didn't not say like clear yes either and i understand that because they they had to really think about that that how to finance it how to with all the logistics marketing advertising release schedule how the hell you know so it took a few months maybe two or three months for them to actually come up with the final final uh, green light and final yes. But as a result of that, they, they said, well, 10 is too much, seven we can do. Our manager told me that, start writing, start writing. I said, nope, 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 I, 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 I am not gonna start writing before I get the green light. I am not gonna do anything just, you know, for nothing and then it, in vain, you know. So I waited for the final yes, and then I wrote. And I wrote everything in three months. You know, all the, all the three albums, I mean, seven albums I wrote in three months, and yeah. Yeah. As soon as I got the, yes, let's do it. They're fun to, fun to play around with the, with the cliches of any given genre and any given time. It was so much fun to, to, 
figure it out how those certain sounds were done what do you need to do how to make certain songs or certain genres sound as it as authentic as possible what are the writing you know things that 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 makes it there are all, all these little things that you know it's so much fun to actually it's good to have some sort of of rules that you kind of have to follow it's 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 nice and you have you, you are given these rules of the game and then you are playing the game and it's 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 quite fun actually i i did i did basically what i did was like like for every album i wrote them in chronological order in the timeline so for example for the you know for let's say the 75 album i i for two or three days i had an intensive listening session with myself i only listened listened to the first three kiss albums and then some alice cooper some black sabbath some acdc i just wanted to you know get into the mood and i did not touch any instrument i was just soaking it in so after two or three days i my my mind was completely in that world so i started writing so automatically i started writing that kind of stuff you know and then i repeated that with every single album I did it you know I then I listened to the disco for a few days and stuff and so so of course with some genres I I, I did do some research and, and kind of like well not research but analyzing and just like educating myself like like really listening to what the different instruments are doing in different eras and, and what, but basically most of that 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 work I already did for collection I already yeah. knew that so it was really relatively easy the only a genre that was um, a bit challenging or not as easy as the others was the trash metal thing because that is not my I mean I, 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 I've listened to a lot of that stuff but not at the time when it came out I never tried to write songs in a trash metal style so for me it was a big question mark how to crack the code because and when I realized that actually the, the code of writing a trash metal sounding song is to do everything completely the opposite what the guys that I was listening to at the time, yeah. uh, the AOR ha hair metal guys were doing, to do it completely the opposite choices of, of, of melody structures and and what kind of scale are you using. You always have to change it like one, uh, like, like half a step up or, up or down or something. That but, So you make it sound a little bit like um, out of key in a way. And, and that's how you make these evil sounding trash metal riffs and, and that's when I realized that okay everything when it comes to harmonies and melodies when, when your ear tells you that it should be major chord it should be minor and the other way around you know so you are like doing the exact opposite and that's when I cracked the code and so okay everything opposite that's you know from 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 hair metal and that's how you write yeah. trash metal sounding riffs and stuff and it worked I, I would I would like people to listen to these albums um, the same way they would listen to any band's back catalog. If they feel like listening to okay, like, what, what what did they did, did what did this band do in '84? Let's listen. Oh, what did they do in '75? Okay, let's listen to. Oh, what did they did in mid mid '90s? Let's listen to. So I don't think people are listening to. Uh, any band's catalog or albums if they find a new band oh it's been there for a long time that they would actually listen to the albums chronologically on the timeline I don't think that's I, I, I would just more like well I don't really give a fuck how people are <laughs> listening to, to them but, but but I would just give an advice that just keep an open mind but if you know already that I fucking hate disco so don't listen to that then. Yeah. <laughs> you know because yeah. I, um, unless you share the exact same taste in music that I have, there you're bound to have few albums that you're gonna hate and probably few albums that you will like. That's how it's gonna go. But unless you are, yeah, unless you are having exactly the same taste in music that I have, then you will love all of all of those albums. If you ha if you if you know, for me, and I I only realized this like this summer, or. You know, yeah, a few months ago I realized that the, the, the thing is that, that all these genres here are actually um, they are ingredients of, 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 of your standard normal Lodi sound you need a little bit of disco and you need a little bit of trash and you need a little bit of this and that 
and you put them in my head which is the pot and then you stir the pot and then you get the soup out and that's where you get your standard normal lot of stuff because it's all, it's all the influences that I have yeah but now you just like I'm now the soup is served you know all the all the ingredients are, are served separately you know so it was really much fun to write in the style of you know and really have those rules and guidelines like, like how how would it sound that if we would do just disco for example or any <laughs> and I, I know like like, like the, the, the the albums like the um, uh, amusement park which is like like early 80s rock or heavy rock and then the AOR those are not that far from typical Lordy yeah. stuff because the because you know I'm so highly influenced by that stuff you know so it, I don't think it sounds I mean I mean writing wise it doesn't sound that much different from your average lot of stuff basically of course sound wise we try to make it to sound like it's from from the 80s so yeah yeah but yeah, I, I listen to the stuff and then I soak it in and then I just sit down and start writing that's how I do it is this I, I don't know how to answer that <laughs> really I mean I, I just do what I do and then I go into the zone as I call it and then I'm just there without eating without you know anything I, I lose track of time and then you know I don't know it, it, it's it's something very natural for me if I if I'm I don't know how to answer the question <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't seven times the work actually it was not we had a we had a formula that we what we came up with Mana originally and then with Dare and Ariana we came up with this formula we decided how many songs are gonna be on each album that was one of the key factors here then Another thing was that, that I was recording a lot of the stuff uh, at my workroom and, uh, and, and usually that would be the time when I record the demos but then we skipped the demo phase completely so the demos that I was writing and recording were already the albums that we're doing. Yeah. You know, so we skipped that, skipped that phase completely which meant that I had to make a, a huge digital leap from 1992 to 2020 you know, meaning that you know the first thing that we got from the from the recording budget we was like a brand new Apple computer with with the pro to, Pro Tools and all that you know shit, and I had to learn how to use all of a sudden. And so I recorded most of the stuff like at my home by myself, and then when I was done, I sent it to the next guy, and they went to the studio recording the drums. So we the only album that we did like the same way. As on collection, for example, or what we usually do was the Skeletric Dinosaur of 1975, which is recorded on analog and, and everything. And you know, even you know, Superfly, uh, yeah, Superfly Trap, the disco thing, we did go to the studio to record the drums and bass there, but but, but um, it took nine months for us to record all the seven albums. So it's not, it sounds like whoa, but <laughs> but actually it's not. It's a little bit more than a month for an album per an album it's not that it's not that you know I mean I mean there are albums in the world that were done in a fucking week yeah including mixing and stuff so it's not that it's not that special really I mean there, I mean there's 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 plenty of time in a, in a six weeks for example to, to to record and you know produce an album no problem yeah yeah I don't think I learned anything from my of myself in the process. No. No. Well, if it's even possible, but I think I'm I'm more full of myself than I was even than I was. <laughs> yeah, because I was like, hey, look what I can do. Hey, <laughs> and I'm like, hey, 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 guys. You know, try to do the same. Yeah. Do you know yeah. if there are any other bands in the world who have released seven albums in one day? <laughs> well, up until this point, I literally half an hour ago uh, until that point I, I I knew that we were the we were the only band in the world who has never done that, ever done that anything like that but half an hour ago someone just told me your colleague told me that two weeks ago some American band released nine albums I have no idea who they are and now yeah. now you know people <laughs> are checking it out that what, what it was about but th that's what I've just heard you know yeah Fuck. <laughs> that sucks. If you had the ten albums, then you exactly. could have still been. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The record labels should always listen to me. Yeah. You know, 
it's not just just music even though it's the it's like 95 90 percent of the whole package it's the music because without it it's not but yeah absolutely it's it's it's, it's not just the music it, it has to have all, everything else there too with the visuals with the album covers with all the all the artwork and with all the graphics and all it it's a full thing and i i asked um the label guys when, when you know when i was doing the in, in, when i was about to do the phoners and stuff and then while i was doing the phoners i was asking the journalist did you get the full album or did you just get the link to listen to them or did you do you see them no no we just got the link you know the pre-listening was no fuck because you know you're, you're missing the point unless you don't see the album covers and you don't cannot read the booklets and shit like that you know you're missing the fucking point and that is that is so shitty because it's part of it I mean, I, it's meant to be uh, uh, consumed in a way that you are also, you know, seeing something, not only listening. Yeah. 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 There's seven different <laughs> albums. <laughs> um, well, of course, I mean, I mean, if you look at the album covers, for example, I mean, those you can see already online. Uh, so, you know, every, every album is like on its sound and on its... On, on, on its um, everything also on, on on its visual visuals design you know so they are trying to be as accurate of picture of its time as we could do it you know including the album you know front cover artwork and everything that's what, you know if you get the box set then the the, the booklets are similar on all the albums you know they they are, if you get the cd box set then you get an actual like like you get a big poster by using the 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 <coughs> seven part you know um, booklet yeah. strips then you get one full poster and shit like that so there, there are little things like that yeah yeah and on vinyl box that you get this big book with it and something so it's always fun to have like little I already forgot your question by the way but <laughs> that's okay <I'm> just <laughs> It comes this Wednesday, so in a few days. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a Christmas song called Merry Blah Blah Blah. <laughs> it's, um, it's an animation, animated by me, drawn by my good friend Mr. Carle. And we started doing this in August already, so it took a lot of work. We had this uh, song, Believe Me, out in, in last August or something. And that was like, like, like our first test test tryout for an animation thing and we did that and now yeah and this was the real thing and, and we barely made it to the deadline you know with the with the with this video so what can i say well take a look and yeah. listen to it <laughs> it's a it's a christmas song by lori so it has uh, mm, uh, the the attempt was to make you know turn things completely upside down so what if Santa this year would actually give, you know, grant your wishes, you know, whatever you wish for, and if what if you would wish for revenge, you know, on someone or something. So there are like, for example, pigs and turkeys who are eating people now, and Christmas trees who are cutting, cutting down people, and put them up inside, you know, standing <laughs> in the corner for a month and you know dry out. You know, so it's just like, yeah, yeah, bizarre, joyous things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you ask any band that has seven. I mean, <laughs> now we have ten albums, but studio albums, but but in few days we have seventeen. And <laughs> ask any, ask Kiss, how do you? You don't, you cannot do that. You just cannot do that. It's just like now we have. Now we then we will have seventeen albums of material to choose from to do live, and obviously we are not going to be able to do that. Yeah. <laughs> you know from every single album okay we might be on our own tour whenever that's gonna happen we might be able to do one song from each album that's that's within possibilities but not likely because there are like even on these seven albums there are like for example the master beast from the moon which I there there's not that many songs on the album that we could I, I think that we could pull it off live that that it would you know do justice for those songs I, I, I don't think it would sound like that good because that's not the kind of style of music that we, sh we should be even trying to attempt to live. Mm. Maybe a few songs here and there we could, but, you know, it depends on the genre yeah. a lot. 
But I would say that that may, maybe at best we could do like one song on of, of, of each album, maybe. Yeah. But then again, but there's these monster mans and hallelujahs that we kind of have to do. So, you know, they have their spot on the on the set too. So, mm. Merry Christmas. I'm, I mean, Merry blah blah blah. <laughs> <laughs>